So new beginnings, that's great. That's hilarious. Hilarious, hilarious. That we're starting, uh, you know, Children's Church and Bibles and Brunch and, um, you know, the launch of some prophetic classes. Uh, that's fantastic. That's, uh, I'm pretty excited about that, especially since uh, yesterday. Actually, it started Friday evening, and then yesterday, and then even today until sunset is, uh, is Rosh Hashanah, which is the, the Jewish New Year. And, uh, you know, at a new year, all kinds of new stuff happens. And so I, I think that that is ironic that we're running that parallel. It's almost like new beginnings. You know, here we are beginning Children's Church, and, and we're beginning, uh, you know, Bibles and Brunch, and we're beginning classes as we, as the Jewish folk, begin a new year. And uh, no matter how we slice it, uh, that is very important. That is very important. They're actually making the transition or in the process of transition from their year, 5780, moving over into 5781. And uh, some of you guys may know that 5780, is, uh, it was actually dubbed the year of the mouth. It was actually also dubbed the decade of the mouth because it was the head of the decade. The, the number 80 uh, the number 80 is the first of, you know, 81, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so whatever, uh, whatever they dub the first year of the decade, that's actually will be what the running uh, for that decade is. So 50, 5780 was dubbed the year or the decade, year and decade of the mouth. And, uh, and that's awesome. That's awesome. So I don't know if... Uh, if any of you guys have recognized, but there's been an awful lot of mouthiness going on in 2020 <laughs> uh, as far as uh, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. And another ironic uh, recognition is that it's the decade of the mouth, and what's going on is there's an attempt to cover the mouths. There, there's an attempt to shut down what is being said, what is being spoken, uh, and, and even the ability to talk, period. I mean, have you ever heard yourself talk with a mask? <laughs> It's kind of ironic how the enemy sets himself up or postures himself against what the Lord is doing. Um, something else that's also funny is the year 5780, it's dubbed as actually um, <laughs> the year of widening the silence of the mouth. The year 5781 is the year of widening the silence of the mouth. And that's funny to me personally because over the last uh, month or so, uh, again, the, the Lord... He speaks to each of us differently. Um, he speaks to me a little more abrasively sometimes to uh, you guys, or then to you guys. Uh, I, I work in construction. Um, not that that is any way, shape, or form anything, but in my zealousness and my excitement, I've continually been hearing the Lord tell me personally, shut up. Stop. Shut up. And... um. And I put myself through a little bit of turmoil because as I refused to stop talking, what is that called? When the Lord asks you to do something and you don't do it, it's called disobedience. And uh, when there's disobedience, there's consequences for that. And so I have brought on myself uh, an uneasiness in, in the soul because I refused to pay attention to what he was asking me. And even this morning, so I had to spend a little bit of time over there asking the Lord to forgive me which uh, he's very gracious, very graceful. And, uh, and now we're going to begin moving forward in the year of widening of the silence of the mouth. That means be quiet. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. So how's everybody's, week, how's everybody's week of prayer been going? I don't know if anybody remembers or not, but last Sunday, Rod had asked us all to finish out the month of September in prayer. He asked us all to give 20 minutes of, of prayer to every single day. Do you guys remember that? I remember that. I remember that. So I'm super grateful uh, that Rod asked us to uh, pray for 20 minutes a day. And uh, I couldn't remember if, if I'm adding this or if I'm not adding this. I know for sure he asked that we would pray, but I couldn't remember if he also asked us to repent. Did he ask us to repent or was it to just pray? Pray and repent or just pray? I can't. It was just pray? Okay. So uh, what's also awesome is he made mention uh, last week of Rosh Kadesh and Rosh Hashanah. And to some of us, some of us know what that is and some of us don't. And so I wanted to take just a few minutes to share what those words were 
Um, Rosh Kadesh is the first day or the head of a month, okay? And so, again, that brings confusion to us because we're like, well, what do you mean? We're in the middle of September. How does that even work? Okay, so there's a handful of calendars that are actually in operation to this date. American people run off of what's called the Gregorian calendar, which was actually put in place, uh, I don't remember which century now, it's eluding me, but I do know that it was put in place by Pope Gregory of the Roman Catholic Church. And so that's what we run off of is the Gregorian calendar. That's why we're in the year 2020. Well, the Jewish people have been running off of the Good Lord's calendar, and they actually have two calendars, which is one is called the civil calendar, which keeps time from creation. The civil calendar keeps time from the time that Adam was created, even until now. And then what's there's another calendar after that, which they operate, they run off two calendars at the same time. The second calendar that they run off of is the sacred calendar. And the sacred calendar began at redemption of Mount Sinai. I know that that's a lot, so please, please track with me. What's really cool is uh, Rosh Hashanah is the Hebraic New Year, which just started. It started on uh, Friday, September 18th. And why does that matter to us? <laughs> why does any of that matter to us? Um, it matters to us because Paul states in Romans chapter 11, 11 through 24. You can turn there if you want to, or you don't have to. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase this. But in Romans chapter 11, we've been grafted into the olive tree. Okay, It's not us Gentiles that support the root, but it's the, re- the root which is Jesus. Jesus is actually the root that supports the branches. But Jesus was Jewish. Are you guys following that? And so uh, the Lord intends to use us, again, in Romans chapter 11. He says that he wants to use the Gentiles to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Okay? What does that mean? He's going to use us to provoke, provoke the Jews to jealousy. First of all, what we really need to understand is also in Romans chapter 3, verse 2, it says, is there any benefit to being a Jew? Paul makes these statements in Romans chapter 3, verse 2. He says, is there any benefit to being a Jew? And he says, absolutely. For the Jews have been entrusted the oracles of God. The Jewish people have been entrusted the secrets of God, of, of the Lord Almighty. And so we would do ourselves a great service to pay attention to what the Jewish people are doing, to what they're honoring and to what they are trying to do. Because they were actually the ones that was originally part of the root. They were the branches of the root. And in their disobedience, we became grafted in. That does not make us any more important than the Jewish people. For the Jewish people were his chosen people. We are just grafted in to what it is that he is doing. So, so like I said, we, we would do ourselves a great service to pay attention to them people and what they are doing, what they are honoring, and what they are recognizing, okay? So the Lord intends to use the Gentiles to provoke the Jews to jealousy and bring them back to himself. What does that look like? There's a big majority of Jewish people that do not believe in Jesus. They do not believe in the Messiah. They are still looking for the Messiah, okay? There's a handful of Jewish people that do believe in Jesus. They're called Messianic Jews, um, then you have us over here, Christians, we believe in Jesus. However, we like to try to separate the Jewishness of Jesus and create our own God. <laughs> and um, that isn't the case. That isn't the case. We are actually in a time right now where the Lord is beginning to uh, open the eyes of the Israelites, open the eyes of the Jewish people, and he is creating uh, what can be dubbed as one new man. For we recognize Jesus, we recognize the spirit of the living God who was the word of God. And what was the word of God? The word of God in the Old Testament was the Torah. Okay. Well, Jesus was the living Torah that was brought to earth. We recognize Jesus as the living Torah. Yet we want to separate the Torah from Jesus, which doesn't work. That just doesn't work. And so the Lord is, what he's going to do is he's going to use us Gentiles who believe in Jesus because the Jewish people are going to recognize we have something they don't. Have you ever noticed somebody that just flows with the Lord? Like they're just full of life. There's something different about them. You know what I'm saying? And if you notice somebody that doesn't really flow in the Lord, um, you can a lot of times tell people that have encountered the Lord in their speech. 
um, people that have encountered the Lord or have the Lord encountered them, you know, they tend to speak life. They're a little bit excited about life. Uh, there's joy. They're, 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 they're in great expectation of the things to come. They're just alive. And people that have yet to encounter the Lord, they, lure, they, usually, um, they usually just speak negative. <laughs> negative. Everything is horrible. Life is horrible. My job's horrible. My, my, my wife is horrible. My kids are horrible. Everything's horrible. My car's broken. My house is no good. Uh, my dog barks too much. They're always complaining about something. And so you can begin to make a recognition from people that have been encountered by the Lord and those who haven't. Okay, so if, if the Gentiles or the Christians or even the Messianic Jews have had an encounter with the Savior, you know, Yeshua Mashiach, which is Jesus Christ, and, and, but we don't understand his ways, but the Jewish people understand his ways, but they reject the spiritualness of Jesus, so the Lord is bringing the two together. He's unifying the Jew and the Gentile. We are in the beginning stages of that. Okay. Where Jewish people and Gentile people are going to begin to develop relationship. Where we can share with them what we have, which is the spirit of the living God. And they can share with us what they have, which is the word of God. His instructions. <laughs> His instructions. Or what we term as the law. <laughs> but actually in translation, the law, that's a mistranslation. 99% of the times when you read the word law in your Bible, it's supposed to say instruction. And that, 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 that deems a whole new ring in our concept and in our mindset. Like when, when somebody says that I am put under the law, I think of bondage. I think I'm in bondage. I think about the speed limit. And why does it got to be 70 when it should be 75? I don't want to follow that. Who wants to follow the law? That sounds horrible. But since we just sang about how we have a good, good father, and when you take that word law and you actually put its proper translation instruction... And it says, to follow the instruction of our Father, it makes us think about things differently. Because who doesn't want to follow the instructions of their Father? Every child underneath 10. I mean, I shouldn't say that. but <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but you get what I'm saying. Like, uh, so th that's very, very, very important to understand. Um, so Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah is the Hebrew or the Jewish New Year which actually is, uh, they, they call it Tishrei, Tishrei 1. So our names for our months are, you know, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, well, you're going to have to give me grace for this. <laughs> their names of their months are Tishrei, Sheshvan, Kislev, Tevet, Shavat, Adar, Nisan. I think it's spelled it's said differently than Nissan. I want to say Nissan like the car, but I think it's like Nissan. <laughs> and then you got a uh, Ayar, Savan, Tammuz, Av, Elul, and Tishrei. Okay, and so Tishrei is their January. What we are in right now is Tishrei one. And so because uh, Rod had mentioned Rosh Kadesh and Rosh Shana, Rosh Kadesh is the first of every month. So. At Tishrei 1, it's Rosh Kadesh. At Shevron 1, Sheshvan 1 is Rosh Kadesh. Kislev 1 is Rosh Kadesh. The first of every month is a Rosh Kadesh. You understand me? Okay. Well, the first of the year, the first of the year is what they call Rosh Hashanah. You can find it in Leviticus 23. It's actually what we would call the Feast of Trumpets. Okay. And, uh... <laughs> So when he said Rosh Kadesh and Rosh Hashanah, they are two and of the same for, um, it's actually a two-day festival because there's Jewish people spread throughout the entire world. And so at different hemispheres and different times, it takes more than 24 hours for everybody to get that. And so actually Rosh Hashanah goes um, from Friday the 18th at sunset, and it ends Sunday the 20th at sunset. So to, we are actually right now still in Rosh Hashanah until tonight at sunset. Okay? Let me see here. Rosh Hashanah is a two-day festival. Happy New Year. <laughs> this is the time when the Lord reinvents himself in creation. Did you guys know this? That this was the time when Adam was created. Today. Or today and yesterday. And, eh, <laughs> because it's a two-day thing. 
This is when the Hebrew calendar actually started, at creation of man. This is Adam's birthday. This is mankind. This is humanity's birthday. That's one reason that there's a celebration to it, okay? And it's, it's a time when we crown the king of the universe through prayer, through shofar blasts, and celebration. The shofar blast, that would be the festival of trumpets that I just talked about in Leviticus 23, if you're interested in researching this stuff out, okay? Um, let me see here. This is something else that's cool. It begins the year on Friday the 18th at sunset, which was two days ago, and today, Sunday the 20th at sunset, it ends. Did you notice how their, their days run sunset to sunset? See, do our days run like that? Our days run midnight to midnight. Now, I'm sharing this stuff with you because of Isaiah. Isaiah, I think it's 55, is it 55 verse 8, where it says, His ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You guys remember that? Talked about it a couple of weeks ago. See, we as humans, we have created a God that fits what we want to be. You know, we, we choose to not honor God in his ways, but we want to honor God in our ways. So actually, it's not a God we serve, it's a God that serves us. And I think that might be out of order. Maybe I'm wrong. But for me, that's out of order. So it's funny. <laughs> it's funny, 40. <laughs> I just turned 40 years old. And it's funny, 40 is very important throughout the whole entire Bible. Usually 40 re represents new beginnings, Okay. And so this stuff really didn't make, make a lick to me uh, just a few months ago. <laughs> but it's funny, when I turned 40 years old, scales removed off of my eyes, and things that used to have no value or importance to me now all of a sudden become important. The Lord has me in a season of new beginnings. And so everything that I thought I knew was truth, this is a special time where I get to lay against what I thought I knew was truth. I get to lay against the plumb line you know, the plumb line of Zerubbabel and Zechariah. I get to lay against the plumb line of the Lord and recognize, are my truths your truths? And if my truths aren't your truths, then I need to reconsider my truths. I'm in a year of new beginnings, okay? So again, um, the year begins uh, February, I'm sorry, Friday the 18th of September at sunset and ends Sunday the 20th at sunset. Why does it go sunset to sunset when I say that the day is, you know, midnight to midnight? I wake up in the morning, it's a new day. Well, I do would like you to go here. Go back with me to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Oh, it's, i got to go through like a whole book in the front of my Bible before I can even get to Genesis 1. <laughs> so, in Genesis 1... Um, Genesis 1, this is, this is the creation of everything, you know, on the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. So if you want to go with me to Genesis 1, verse 5, and God, and, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And in the evening and the morning were the first day. Did you catch that? The evening and the morning were the first day. Now jump down here to verse 8, okay? And God called the firmament of heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. What was the second day? The evening and then the morning. You can jump down with me to, sit to uh, number 13. And again, you know, this is uh, where the Lord brought forth the grass and the herbs and, and the trees and everything that was bearing seed. And in 13, he says, and the evening and the morning were the third day. What was the third day? The evening and the morning. You can go with me over to uh, verse 19. And uh, same thing, in the evening and the morning were the fourth day. It's not the morning from the evening. It's the evening from the morning. Do you see how humanity has taken what the Lord has laid out as a pattern and we have twisted it to fit what we want it to fit? Do you see how wild that is? That is in the very first chapter of the Bible. And we already take what the Lord sets and we make it different. See, his ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so we really, really need to um, begin to reevaluate some things, because for the Lord to come back, you know, he's making his bride spotless, you know, blemish-free. We are going to understand what it is to live in his kingdom, 
because he's not going to live in ours. <laughs> you know, in Matthew, you know, he says, uh, you know, the Lord's Prayer. It says, Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. You know, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, again, in the Lord's Prayer, we're going to do the Lord's will down here just like it's done up there. It's not going to be the other way around. He's not going to bend his will to what I want. Or he would, you know, if that was the case, he wouldn't be my God. I would be his God. And that's just not, I am not his God. He's my God. You know, I was born again into his kingdom. Therefore, I'm going to have to take on his attributes and change some of the way that I do things. So, let me see here. Right now is still Rosh Hashanah. And we, that what the Jewish people are calling, this is called from right now to a little more than a week. Ten days later is going to be Yom Kippur. That's another Jewish holiday. It's called the Day of Atonement. Okay? The Jewish people believe that we are in the, the ten days right now are called the High Holy Days. Not the High Holidays. The High Holy Days. Okay? This is a time, this is a time where, uh, you can, you can see this actually, hold on, let me see here. Yom Kippur begins Sunday, September 27th at sunset, and it ends on Monday, September 28th at nightfall. What is today? This is September 20th, so we are in this portion of time, this cutout time of the Jewish people's high holidays. And the reason I'm going this route is because I've been telling you guys all year, all year, a lot of the times when I get to talk that we are actually in, we are in a special moment in time where the Lord has bringing forth a, a, a chronos timeline and a kairos timeline. A chronos timeline is a chronological order of events and a kairos timeline is a special time, a set apart time where the Lord is intervening. Okay, the Lord is intervening. We are in a special time right now where the Lord is beginning to reveal truth. And why is he revealing truth? Because it says those that wish to worship the Lord will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Okay, I want you to understand this. The Jewish people have the truth. The Gentiles have the spirit. Okay? I can't come and worship the Lord in spirit only. I got to worship him in spirit and truth. So the Lord is, we're in a season of unveiling truth. Not my truth, not your truth, but his truth. And his truth is different than my truth. And his truth is different than your truth. This is the last time I talked. I got to talk with anytime the Lord gives you a revelation. Anytime the Lord gives you a revelation, it causes a crisis in your thought process. When the Lord reveals something to you, it challenges what you thought. It causes you to make a decision. Am I going to believe what I thought was the truth? Or am I going to believe his truth? And you know what's crazy is a lot of time it will cost you. It'll cost you to follow his truth. It'll cost you friends. It'll cost you family. It'll cost you all kinds of things. Now, there's not a one-size-fits-all, but I've recognized that when I choose to follow truth, then it comes at a cost. See, when you guys got saved, when you received salvation, you changed the way that you lived because you began to come into his kingdom. You understand? You understand you got a revelation of salvation which caused you to change the things that you did, the way that you lived, the way that you acted, the way that you spoke, the things that you did. You know, it's not a do good, get good thing. It's because we want to honor our Father. We want to honor Him, you know. Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. That is honored. May we honor your name, Father. Okay? Are you guys following me? All of these times that I'm telling you guys about right now, I know that this is a lot. <laughs> And we're just getting started because I bring a lot. <laughs> this is just getting started. But all of these times in season coincide with Exodus chapter 32 through 34. You can write that down. I might, I might, I might jump over there just to hit a cup, couple brief little, little things. It's Exodus chapters 32 through 34. Exodus 32 through 34, this was Moses' third trip up Mount Sinai to intercede for the Jewish people for their sin of the golden calf. Do you guys know, know what I'm talking about? So Moses went up to Mount Sinai 
Even before that, let me just share this with you, okay? The Jewish people were set free from bondage from Egypt, and then they went to Mount Sinai to get what we call the law, but what they really got was instructions, okay? We, as Christians, we love to receive salvation from the, Israel, or from the, from the Egyptians. We, we, love, we love to be broken free out of bondage. And then we always want to bypass Mount Sinai and go straight to evangelism. Don't you think that's funny? When, when the Jewish people came out of bondage, they went straight and got instructions from the Father before they did anything else. When we come out of bondage, we want to bypass instruction and start telling everybody else about salvation. Just something I've noticed. It might be a little bit backwards, you know, because until I get the instructions or the laws of the Father, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I don't know about y'all, but I remember when I got saved, and I told all my friends and all my family they were all going to hell, and they were all sinners, and created this weird divide between all my friends and all my family. None of them wanted to be around me no more, because there was no grace, there was no mercy. Maybe if I would have went and received the instructions from the Father at Mount Sinai, (laughs) then I could have maybe knew what I was talking about a little, instead of just blah, 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 blah. I was a clanging symbol. (laughs) I was speaking truth with no love. (sighs) Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. So this was Moses' third trip to Mount Sinai to intercede for the Jewish people for their sin of the golden calf. See, Moses went up to the mountains and he got the Ten Commandments. That's, you know, part of it. He got so much more than the Ten Commandments, but we really hone in on the Ten Commandments. And then um, as he's getting the Ten Commandments, let me see here. Let me just jump on up over there. Let me see here. Moses is up there. He gets the Ten Commandments. And then in Exodus 32, verse 7, it says, The Lord told Moses, Quick, go down the mountain. The people you brought from Egypt have defiled themselves. They have already turned from the way I commanded them to live. They have made an idol shaped like a calf, and they have worshipped and sacrificed to it. They are saying, These are our gods, O Israel, who brought them out of Egypt. (laughs) So already the Lord entered into a covenant with the people of Israel. He said, these are the things I'm going to do. Do you want to follow them? And the people said, yes, we want you to be our God. We will follow your instructions. And uh, so Moses went up to Mount Sinai to get some instructions from the Lord. And as Moses is up there um, getting the Ten Commandments, the first set of the Ten Commandments were written by the finger of God himself. They were written by the finger of God himself. And as Moses is up there getting the Ten Commandments, the Lord says, hey, you need to get back down there because they've already broken the rules. So Moses comes down, he comes down the mountain, and, uh, and I believe it's Joshua is with Moses. Yes, Joshua is with Moses, and they're coming down the mountain, and Joshua's like, what's that noise? And Moses is like, that is not the sound of, of cheering from winning a battle, and that is not the sound of losing a battle. That is the sound of celebration. And Moses comes off of the mountain and, uh, and, and sees they have made this golden calf that Aaron, you know, the people came to Aaron, and they're like, hey, Moses left us. We need a God. And so Aaron said, hey, let me get all your jewelry. He melted the jewelry down, and they mailed a golden calf. And that's what the Israelites were actually uh, worshiping was a golden calf. Moses was so infuriated, he came down off the mountain, and he threw the tablets on the ground, and they broke, shattered into a bunch of pieces. Okay? Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? You jump over here, you stay in 32 and jump over here to verse 30. And it says, The next day Moses had said to the people, You have committed a terrible sin. But I will return to the Lord on the mountain. Perhaps I will be able to obtain forgiveness for you. Okay? This is why Moses went up the mountain again. All right? Moses went up the mountain and returned 40 days later. On Tishrei 10, according to their calendar, (laughs) he returned on Tishrei 10, which is the Day of Atonement, which is Yom Kippur. That's what we're getting ready to come into. That'll be September 27th for us with the second set of tablets. With the second set of tablets, okay? But before he went up there, see, this was, so Moses went up there. And 40 days later, he brought down the commandments again. You understand? But at the beginning and the first day, at the first day, 40 days before he brought the commandments, that would be Elul 1, 
in the Hebrew calendar, which is August 21st in our Gregorian calendar, the Jewish people go, go into what's called teshuva. Teshuva means repentance. It's 40 days of repentance, okay? 40 days of repentance. Uh, and if we was to follow our timeline, that started on August 21st, and that'll end September 27th, okay? It's called shuva, return, repent, is what that means. And it's no different than when Moses came down off of the mountain and they had built a golden calf, and he said, I will ask the Lord to forgive you guys. And then it took him 40 days to go up and come back down, okay? That's where we are in a historical timeline if we were following the pattern of the Jewish people. Why is that important? Because everything that the Lord does, he uses the Jewish people as his pattern. That's what's so important about these 10 high holy days right now that we are in. Um, for centuries, the 40 days of Rosh Kadesh, which is the, the head of the month, you guys under, to Rosh Kadesh, or which would be Elul 1, to Tishri 10, which is Yom Kippur, remain as days of special divine grace and forgiveness. Divine grace and forgiveness. Culminating in Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. These 10 days that we're in right now, it's a time of self searching and spiritual searching of our hearts and our motives. See, if, if, if you want to kind of jump back over, hmm, jump back over here to Exodus 32, verse 10, or here we'll do 9 again. We'll do, we'll do 32 verse 9. Then the Lord said, I have seen how stubborn and rebellious these people are. Now leave me alone so my anger can blaze against them and destroy them all. God wanted to destroy them all. You know, like Noah. Wanted to kill everybody. He wanted to kill them all. But it was because of the repentance. It was the repentance of Moses that turned the heart of the Father. This is what we are in right now. We are in a special time of repentance to turn the heart of the Father. You guys understand it? Look around, look around America. Look around America. Talk about the things that you see. Don't talk about them. Just picture with me the things that you see, okay? Lawlessness. I want you to hear that term that I just said. Lawlessness. Defund the police. This sickness that has happened upon the world. Okay? I want you to think about these things for just a moment. Is it possible that the prayers of the saints could turn the heart of the Father? Doesn't Second Chronicles, doesn't it say, If my people who are called by my name, have you been marked by the blood of the Lamb? Have you been set aside and chosen by Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you have then you are his people. If my people would humble themselves and pray, I would heal their land. Think about that. Do you see where we are in the historical timeline? Can you see our world? Can you see where Moses, the people, the world, has sinned against God? And in Moses' day, the Jewish people sinned against God, and he said, I'll kill them all. I'll kill them all. And Moses said, no, 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 Lord, you can't do that. He lifted up the people, and the Lord changed his mind. Is that not amazing? Huh. Maybe if my people who are called by his name would humble themselves and pray, that he would heal our land. Do you think that our land needs healed? You understand the, 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 the specialness of where we are. Where we are, okay? Do you understand in the year of 5780 was the year of the mouth, the decade of the mouth? What have we all been doing? Maybe it's just me. I can't put that on you. I can't put that on you. It was just me. Them knuckleheads, they want me to wear a mask. Everywhere I go, I can't even go to the gas station without a mask. I can't get my McDonald's without a mask. Rah, 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 rah. COVID-19, it's so ridiculous. Oh, they're scared. They're scared. They're scared. It, hmm. And they're saying, they're saying on their end, I'm a knucklehead because I won't wear a mask and I'm going to make everybody else sick. You see this ridiculous, it goes both ways. It's not that my way is right or their way is right. It's this, what has the enemy done? He has pitted us, he has pitted humanity against humanity. Okay, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. 
He is stealing our joy. He's stealing our peace. He's stealing our camaraderie with our fellow brother. Doesn't, doesn't, didn't Jesus say the most important two commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul was one. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Are we loving our neighbor when we condemn them because they don't do what we want them to do? Are they loving us when they condemn us because we don't do what they want us to do? Do you understand what I'm saying? So 5780, right? The year of the mouth. We are now in transition to the widening, ah, the widening of the silencing of the mouth. Can you follow that? Maybe we're coming into the year where it's time to shut up. That's what the Lord told me, not you. Don't, that's not what maybe the Lord would tell you to please gently lower your voice. Or please be quiet. But for me, I respond to much. <laughs> he asked me to gently be quiet, and I just kept going until I got in trouble. And then I got to ask him to forgive me. <laughs> but when he goes, stop. And I'm like, yes, sir. Anywho. So for, ten, for centuries, the 40 days from, uh, you know, of Elul 1 to Tishri 10, which would be our August 21st to September 27th, those remain as days of special divine grace and forgiveness, culminating in Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. See, Moses prayed, and the Lord changed his mind. And when the Lord changed his mind, he brought the commandments down for the second time. The instructions, not the law. The instructions. The instructions. What's wrong with the instructions? Honor the Lord your God, love your mother and your father, honor your mother and father. That's the first commandment with the blessing that he will give you a long life. Don't commit murder, don't commit adultery. What's wrong with those? Nothing. Hmm. I'm going to calm down. I'm getting zealous. Whew. That's the time that we're in. Moses changed the heart of the father, and we too can change the heart of the father. But you don't change the heart of the father. I mean, maybe it's just me. But I've had to have a conversation with friends and family. And when there is a sharp disagreement, we usually both leave the table like, you just ain't never going to get it. How retarded are you? You know that a mask doesn't prove anything. You know, there's, there's only 10,000 deaths, not 8 billion of them. This is, this is no worse than the flu. That's me. And they're doing the exact opposite. This retard just don't get it. If he would wear a mask, then they wouldn't get sick. Blah, 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 blah. We, in, in, in a confrontation, there's no resolution. But if I take that and zip my lip in the year 5781 and take it to the Lord, for it's the Lord that changes the hearts of man. You understand that? We are coming into a year where it's no longer the year to pronounce how much everything is not good, we are no longer in the year to pronounce how ridiculous a person with different of a, difference of opinions are. We are coming out of that. We just, we just experienced that. And what, is, what has it gotten us? What has it gotten us? What has the year of the decade of the mouth gotten us? Hmm. I think the Lord's switching it up a little. He goes, hey, okay, I'll let you all have your turn. Now we're going to do it my way. Zip. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Okay? With all that being said, Happy New Year. <laughs> happy Rosh Hashanah. The transition from 5780 to 5781. Okay? It's time for us to stop bickering, stop complaining, stop arguing. Because confrontation resolves nothing. We all just dig our heels in, and it's my way or the highway. Nobody budges. We're Americans. We don't back down from nothing. <sighs> if you guys can turn with me to Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. So I just spent all that time giving you guys just a little brief history, a little history lesson about what's going on for the Jewish people to the American people. And now we're actually going to go into the scripture of what I feel like the Lord has shared with me concerning the year 5781, okay? Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. All right, I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. Maybe 
I have? Let me see here. How do I get that wrong? Oh, because I was in 12. <laughs> All right, Matthew 11. <laughs> Matthew 11, 12, not 12, 12. Matthew eleven twelve. it says, And the time John... And from the time John the Baptist began preaching and baptizing until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people attack it. Did you guys catch that? I want you to think about what's going on right now, okay? The Lord has decided I'm going to bring us into some unity. We're we're in a season, we're in the end times, where uh, he's going to use the Gentiles to provoke the Jews to jealousy. And, um, and so his kingdom is being advanced. You understand? That's what that scripture says. His kingdom is being advanced. So what does the enemy do to try to stop the advancement of the kingdom? He sends violence. He sends violent people. Okay? It's not peace, love, happiness, joy. What we are seeing right now is riots, destruction, death on, on, on an accelerated level. That is just absolutely ridiculous. Okay, ever since John the Baptist began preaching, the, the kingdom of God has been advancing and violent people attack it. I don't know if you guys know your Bible's that good. How many times was Jesus, were they going to kill Jesus? How many times were they going to kill Jesus? And he escaped through the crowd. You know, or he had to come out, jump out of, come out. How many times they tried to kill Peter? How many times they tried to kill Paul? They did kill Stephen. They stoned Stephen. You know what I'm saying? When, when we preach about the kingdom of God and his love and his salvation, the enemy does not like that. And so he attacks the kingdom with violence. Can you guys see that in the world that we live in right now? Okay? Um, now, if you can turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12. I got 12 through 18, but I think I wanted to kind of slow it up a little bit. Ephesians chapter 6, Okay? This is what we need to understand. This is a refresher. This is a refresher that I myself need all the time. Because I'm a young man that's full of testosterone that thinks I need to show you I can yell yell louder, scream louder, fight stronger, be, you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous. So many times i got to remind myself of this. Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we are not fighting against people made in flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world, and against wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. So I'm not fighting against my brothers. I'm not fighting against that. I'm, fi- I'm fighting against a spirit, okay? I'm fighting against a spirit. I'm fighting against spirits in heavenly realms that are influencing people to live a fearful lifestyle. They're influencing people to have control. I need to take that up. And the spirit. Okay, you understand that? You understand that? You understand that? Do you know what a stronghold is? A stronghold. A stronghold is just a wrong thought process. That's all. That's all that a stronghold is. That's all that a stronghold is, is a wrong thought process. Does the Lord say, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind? So if the Lord hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but people are operating out of fear, what does that mean? That something else is influencing them. And that gives us an opportunity to lift them up in prayer. Why? Because we fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities and rulers in the heavenly realms. You understand? Hmm. I got 12 through 18 because I thought when I was putting this together, I thought it would be cool. So I'll just read 12 through 18. For we are not fighting against people made from flesh and blood, but against the evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against those mighty powers of darkness who rule this world, and against wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. This is a key, guys. Hmm. Use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy in the time of evil, so that after the battle you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the sturdy belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. In every battle you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. Put on salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Here we go. Pray at all times 
and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all Christians everywhere. I'm telling you, this year, 5781, the year of a widening of the silence of the mouth is all about prayer. It's no longer verbally attacking my brothers and sisters, verbally attacking the guy that cut me off in traffic, verbally attacking, like I said, I know it ain't y'all, y'all are amazing, it's just me. It's just me in my private time that I verbally attack people for not doing what I think they should do or act the way I think they should act. This is a time for that to be over. Our words have powers. That person is not stupid. That person is not ignorant. That person is not retarded. That person is a child of God who he loves. And what was the second of those important commands? Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, turn with me to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Matthew 16, 18. Okay, again, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation, Matthew 16, verse 18. Now I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all of the power of Hades will not conquer it. Here we go. It's really good at 19. Hold on just a minute. All of the power of Hades will not conquer the church. You catch that? I really don't think that the Lord was telling Peter that he was going to be the church. He says, you know, the Lord, this is Jesus talking. He says, you know, Peter, you were called Peter, the rock that I'll build my church. You know, I don't think that was contingent upon anything that Peter did or didn't do. (laughs) I think that was really contingent upon Jesus. But he says, all of the gates of Hades shall not conquer. What What are you? What am I? We are the church. Listen, the enemy's not going to conquer us. He isn't. But how we fight determines our success. Are we taking it to the Lord for him to fight our battles? Or are we being tough guy and trying to fight the battles ourselves? You know, verbally. So... Number 19, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus has given Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. You guys reading the same thing I'm reading? Whatever you lock on earth will be locked on heaven. Whatever you open on earth will be opened in heaven. Are you catching that? What I bind on earth is bound in heaven. What I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Okay? It's pretty simple. Lord, I bind up that spirit of fear right now in that person in Jesus' name. Lord, I command that spirit of fear off of them. Lord, and I just release a spirit of peace upon them. You know how important it is that when you bind something up, you have to lose something. Because Jesus says, you know, when a demon comes out of a man, it goes into the desert seeking rest, it finds none. And then it gets seven demons stronger than itself, and it returns back to its original house, finding that it is swept and clean, and then they all enter back into that person, and then they're worse off than before. You guys know that, right? Of course you do. So anytime you bind something up without loosing something, you're setting them people up for failure. Think about it. Think about it. If the spirit of fear leaves me, my house is empty. My house is empty if the spirit of fear leaves me. And it goes out there and gets seven demons stronger than itself, and it comes back to this house, and because nothing has been put back into this house, they all come back to me, and I'm in worse shape than before. Are you following me? But if the spirit of fear leaves me, and then, you know, the peace and the joy of the Lord... He says, I haven't given you a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. If I have the spirit of this love and this power and this sound mind that has replaced the spirit of fear, when they all come back, this is already, the residence has already been taken up. So they can no longer afflict me. You follow me, right? 1 Corinthians 15, 46. Turn over there. See, everything happens in a natural before it happens in the spiritual. Think about that. Everything happens in a natural before it happens in a spiritual. I don't know. I not know where Corinthians is. That's funny. 
1546. 1 Corinthians 1546. 1 Corinthians 1546, New Living Translation. What came first was the natural body, and then the spiritual body comes later. Adam was the first man made from the dust of earth, while Christ, the second man, came from heaven. So you understand you were born of flesh before you was born of spirit. So the Lord is showing us a pattern. What is bound on earth then is bound in the spirit. What's bound on earth is bound in heaven. Earth, heaven. You understand? Dirt, not dirt. Okay. The man came first. Adam came first from the dirt. Jesus came second from heaven. You, you see the pattern. Patterns happen. Patterns, the Lord is always revealing himself in patterns. A lot of times the Jewish people are the pattern. If we can pay attention to the pattern, we'll do ourselves a great service. You understand that? So when he's telling us what is bound on earth is bound in heaven, and then he tells us, you know, first the man came and then the spirit came, we got to bind it down here first for it to take a place there, okay? And how does that happen? How do I know what to bind on earth? By spending time with the Lord. When you spend time with the Lord, he reveals the secrets of his heart, I mean, a man thinks that it's good. Scott thinks that it's good to just blab, 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 and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. But if I would be quiet, you know, it says, be still and know that I am God. You know how you, how do you listen to God? You shut up. Listen and silent are spelled with the same letters. Be silent before the Lord. Listen, and he'll tell you what to pray. That kind of goes hand in hand with Jesus only did what he seen the Father do and he only said what he heard the Father say. By spending time with the Lord, he shows you what he's doing and you can get in line with that and be super successful. Or you can fight a battle on your own and get your tail kicked. Um, Again, on Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18, 18. I should have used Bible markers. That's what I should use, huh? All right, Matthew 18, 18. This is just a couple chapters after Matthew 16. (laughs) Jesus says, tell you this, whatever you prohibit on earth is prohibited in heaven, and whatever you allow on earth is allowed in heaven. This is a super, do you understand? So he said it two times, super important. Okay, this this is what's even better, is I want you guys to understand this. As you look around and see the numbers consistently, you know, dwindling, we can say that it's summer, we can say that they're traveling, we can say whatever you want. The church is fantastic, but we're actually coming into this also, which is number 19. I tell you this also, if two of you agree down here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three are gathered together because of my name, there I am among them. Listen, we're coming into the time of the micro church. We're going back to the Acts church of house to house, of house to house. Listen, I love y'all. This is a fantastic facility. It's beautiful. Speakers, tall, gorgeous, air conditioning, lights, everything. Beautiful faces out there. Chairs galore. Fantastic. But something's happening on a little bit lower scale. Because where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is also. When two of us are gathered representing the kingdom of God, we advance his kingdom. Okay? How much advancement is done here? We do a lot of awesome teaching. We do a lot of awesome talking. We pray. We we worship the Lord. Corporate worship is fantastic. I'm not knocking any of that stuff. But really it happens in the nitty gritties of our day-to-day life. That's where the advancement of the kingdom of God happens. It doesn't happen in here. We are the church. This isn't the church. This building isn't the church. You are the church, and I am the church. So we take the kingdom out with another individual, and we pray for those that are broken, have bent mindsets. Then breakthrough occurs. Are you following me? The micro church is coming back. That isn't to speak craziness upon the church in any way, shape, or form. But we're going to have small People, I'm going to have people, I'm horrible at hosting, but we've been trying to have people over our house every Sunday at 5 o'clock. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. Is my wife losing her mind because she thinks the house has got to be spotless? Probably. (laughs) They show up and I'm in flip-flops and shorts and a cut-off t-shirt like, dude, you're supposed to be dressed up. I'm like, you're at my house. I'm chilling out. (laughs) We're a little more intimate in our houses than we are at church. We get to see the nitty gritties. You know, kids are running around and breaking stuff and dogs are licking people and eating food off of plates and cats are running around and people smell and talk funny and you're like, oh, this isn't exactly what it's like in church, but it's real. It's real. Oh, man. 
<laughs> All right, you know. Again, praying, praying, praying against strongholds, they're just bent mindsets. You know, Romans 12, 2. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm paraphrasing here. You can turn there and read it if you want. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you will know the acceptable plan of the Lord. That you will know his plans. If we would just go in this time of the high holy days, of, uh, of, of checking ourselves, checking our heart motives, uh, celebrating the Lord for an awesome year and bringing us into a new year, but laying down what I thought I knew as truth against the plumb line of the Lord and asking him to transform my thought process. That takes humility. That takes humility. I don't know about you, but when 2 plus 2 equals 4 and the Lord says 2 plus 2 equals 9, I struggle with that. <laughs> I struggle with that. I'm like, what, 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 wait a minute, two plus two is four, that ain't nine? And he's like, I told you it's nine. You know, when, when Peter had the dream, Peter, when Peter had a vision, he was on the roof, he was in Joppa playing, praying at the noon hour, and a sheep fell from heaven, and all these animals were in there, and the Lord said, get up, kill, and eat. And Peter said, absolutely not, I'm never doing that, I ain't never done that. And God said, don't call unclean what I've called unclean. Can you do that? Can I do that? Peter, how old was Peter? 30, 40 years old? His whole entire life, he never did anything. He didn't associate with Gentiles. That's not what Jewish people do. And then at 40 years of being built, ingrained in you, this is who I am, this is how I act, this is what I do. And the Lord says, I want you to change that. Can you? Can you? I'm working on it. It's hard. <laughs> it is hard. <laughs> but there's grace. The Lord gives grace. Listen, when we're trying to make transitions in our life and we fail, the Lord doesn't beat us up and spank us. I've already told you, when you've got little babies that are just learning how to walk and they stand up and they take a couple steps and they fall down, do you stand them up and spank them? No. You freaking go, oh, that's so cute, you're trying. I like to think that's how our Father is in heaven. Anywho, we'll close with this. If you could turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. This is Hannah's, Hannah's prayer for a son. Okay. There's a lot, you can read all of chapter 1 if you if you need the context. But uh you know, really, this is a man who, his name was Elkanah. He had two wives, and one wife had a, had a child, and Hannah did not. And, and every year, um, this lady would make, you know, would give this other lady, the lady with a child would give the lady without a child a hard time. You know, it broke her heart, because she just wanted to have a son also. It broke her heart. And uh, so Hannah went to the temple, um, and she was praying, okay? We'll pick this story up over here, First Samuel um, Chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. I'll read it out of the King James Version. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. We can keep going. Eli was the priest at the time, okay, guys? What I'm trying to say, what I'm showing you here, is that she didn't pray with her mouth. She didn't verbally say, Lord, I want a son. She said it in her heart. She said it in her heart. We are coming into the year of the widening of the silence of the mouth. This is a time where the Lord is going to begin to speak to hearts, and our hearts are going to speak to the Lord. We're not necessarily going to have to verbalize everything that we go through. Okay? If you want to keep on reading, Eli thought she was drunk, because who would go to pray at the temple and not talk? I would think she was drunk too. And she said, if you want to flip over, flip over the page, she says in 15, Oh, no, sir, I'm not drunk. I'm just very sad, and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. It breaks my heart to see my family members locked up in fear. It breaks my heart. I want you guys to know that restoration always comes on the back of repentance. Okay? If we can go back kind of to, that, to the story of Moses in, in the 40 days... You know, we, the Hebrew people right now are honoring what's called teshuva. Okay, it's the 40 days of repentance. 
This goes so much more deeper, but I don't have it all mapped out. I'm being blown away. If you guys thought what you got today was good, study it deeper. Because actually the ten high holy days are the ten days that the books are open. When the Lord, when God himself comes out from the field and sits on the throne and all of humanity passes before him and he decides whether they're going to be a year of health or a year of sickness. Isn't that not crazy, right? Based off of their response, their heart motives, based off of what's in their heart. That's why the Jewish people are examining their heart at this time. There's three books that are opened up and I don't have it all. I don't have it all figured out. I'm still learning about it. But I do know that there's a book of deeds where the things that we do are recorded. And in this time, what's going on is they're trying to change the heart of the Father. We are trying to change the heart of the Father because the books are only open for 10 days. And then the books close. There is a 10 point, there's a 10 day appointed time where we could repent for our sins and our sins will be blotted out of a book. Listen, Jesus covers our sins. Don't get me wrong. Don't, I'm not, don't, don't hear what I'm not saying. He covers our sins. But we will all give account for the things we do or don't do. Jesus or no Jesus. <laughs> there is so much more to this little teaching right here that I am even kind of giving it justice for. Listen, the truth is there if you study. One book ain't going to cut it. I can promise you that. One translation ain't going to cut it. I encourage you guys, please look into these things for yourself. As Rod was saying last week, you know, the the story of the ten virgins, five had oil and five don't. I just want to tell you guys right now, it's amazing. It's It's a blessing for me to get to stand up here and share my heart with you. But I'm telling you, you can't have my oil. You have to cultivate your own oil. If you do not cultivate your own oil, when it's all said and done, and the bridegroom comes back for his bride for the wedding feast... I hate to say it, but a lot of people are going to be disappointed. Because coming here and listening to my revelation isn't it. The Lord has to reveal it to you. You have to have your own revelations. And in your own revelations, you develop your own oil. It's personal relationship with Jesus. It's personal relationship with God the Father. Listen, I love Jesus. Don't, I love him. I love him so much. Jesus is the only reason that I have access to the throne room. Jesus is my brother. Okay? It says Jesus was the firstborn of many. We are the many. Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except for through the Son. But why do we stop at the Son? Why don't we access the Father? The Son is amazing. I'm not knocking Jesus in any way, shape, or form. But I'm saying there's a greater depth. There's a greater dimension of experiencing the love of God that we are not tapping into. And He's asking us, would you tap into me? Would you tap into my love? Would you lay your life down so that I can flow through you and advance my kingdom? You know, He... he, For God so loved the world, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He loves the world. And I'm I'm good. I'm good, but can I lay my life down to reach the other ones that God loves? Can you? Does screaming at people with our mouths show the love of God? Or does it bring division? Does digging our hails in and saying, I'm right, you're wrong, does that really do anything? We need to find a different way, guys. And we're in a special time. We're, in a, we're, at, we're at a turn of the year where the Lord is revealing the way. The way this year is in keeping this zipped and praying. With that being said, uh, I want to close in prayer, and, and um, we're going to have a few more um, Worship songs, if, if you would like to stay and worship, please stay. If you have to go, then please go. I know that I'm going to spend the next few minutes following the pattern of my Jewish brothers and sisters, and I will be up here repenting. I will be up here asking the Lord to forgive the church for not representing Him properly. I will be up here asking the Lord to change the heart of the church, 
to begin manifesting his love and his presence throughout the world without hating. It's hard. It's hard. It is so hard to walk with the Lord. I mean, it's awesome. It's easy. You know? <laughs> when, when Jesus says, if somebody smacks you on the cheek, turn your other cheek. Can you really do that? Can I do that? Heck no. <laughs> when somebody smacks me on the cheek, they got it coming. <laughs> Unless I'm walking with the Lord and the Holy Spirit says, uh-uh. Can I die to self and submit to his plans and his purposes? Listen, guys, God loves you. He loves you, but he also loves them other people out there. And so I'm just asking you to reconsider the things we do, the things that we say. Lift them up in prayer. Lift them up in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house, to share your word, to laugh, to chuckle, to cut up, but also to the, the, the somber reality that you are not only a God of mercy, but you're also a God of justice. Of, uh, uh, you're, you're, a, you're a just God. Lord, we, we want to honor you. Lord, we ask that you would help us with, with, with holy fear, Lord. Help us to be in awestruck of who you are. Lord, we ask that you would renew our hearts, renew our minds, renew a right spirit within us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just ask that you would help us, help us, help us to lay down our preconceived ideas of who you are and what you are and teach us your ways, your ways. Lord, I ask that as we go throughout this week, we would be a light into a dark world that we would offer hope to humanity, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just give you permission to come and flow through us. As we go through this week, Heavenly Father, I ask that you would bring these words back to our remembrance. Lord, let us marinate on them, Heavenly Father. Let them permeate our beings and help us to bring you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.